Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Riverdale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously, we're picking up with a seven-year time skip. It was kind of interesting, that immediate intro, where we basically had Archie's worlds kind of combining together. Obviously, his school life, and high school life with the Bulldogs and everything, and warping that with his military experience. And you kind of feel like, even though it's kind of a nightmare, it seemed like... Like maybe that's kind of foreshadowing some stuff. Like obviously him trying to carry um, Jughead who got hurt. Even at one point he's looking up and he sees like Cheryl kind of giving him this look. And it's like, it seems like that dream was foreshadowing some stuff. Especially even Hiram pointing a gun at him. I mean, obviously him and Hiram have definitely had their beef over the years. Um so I'm curious to know what that's about, but obviously, like, he wakes up in, like, a VA hospital, and his commanding officer is telling him, it's like, yeah, you're going back to Riverdale to teach, like, you know, uh, resuscitate the ROTC program, but um, Archie's like, no, 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 I want to I, I wanna keep going, but it's like, no, that's in order. Because for Archie, it seems like a lot of stuff happened. Not everyone in his unit made it out, especially because he's a sergeant. So it's like, these are people's lives. It's not like, it's not just a situation. Of, oh, these are my friends. These are my brothers. These are people who are, yes, his brothers in arm, but also the people he's in charge of. So he probably, and we know how, who Archie is personality wise. Like when he fails, he takes it upon himself. He blames himself deeply. So whatever went down in that time frame, like I'm sure like he is carrying that with him and blaming himself, especially cause, um, his buddy Jackson is like missing a leg and it's like, I should be the one in the bed. And obviously he's like, yeah, you should. And they're joking and laughing about it. But he's like, yeah, but seriously, Archie, if it wasn't for you, Sarge, I wouldn't be here right now. You saved my life along with many others. And I think it's such an interesting thing about Archie, too, is, like, in this case of, like, oh, it's not like he wanted to come back to Riverdale. He was actually forced to. So I think that speaks volumes, you know, because, you know, we heard from Jughead at the end of the last episode, it will be seven years before they all came together again, you know? And it's like, I think once Archie found this path of his, I think he didn't want to go backwards because it's, like, how much he's grown and changed. I think he felt like he still couldn't go home because there was just too much, too many memories. His dad, you know, um, everything that happened to him in Riverdale, it just there was just so much that I think he just didn't want to. Or maybe it's, like, I got this new family. I got these new brothers in arms, and I can't leave them alone. I got They're, they're in the trenches. I got to be in the trenches with them. So I figure... That may be kind of the situation, but when obviously Archie comes back, Riverdale's not quite what he remembered it. The, the sign in the Riverdale was burned down, um, goes to Pops, and um, obviously the speakeasy down below is still kind of open, but it's like the white worm now, like Tony's in charge of everything, we see her, Fang, um... Sweet Pea, even Kevin, and it's, it's that thing, it's, it's kind of a sad situation because it's like... If we were able to kind of, if the season was able to kind of start where it was originally supposed to, this would be the season five premiere. Obviously, like, it would have been more impactful because it would have been like a couple months in between season four's finale and season five's premiere. Obviously, in this particular case, it's all rolling in season five, but it's like, it's back to back episodes, literally a week apart. So we don't get that like time apart to really appreciate. It still gives you that little bit of like, oh man, it's still nice because even though it's literally only been a week for us, you know, people watching the show, it's still this feeling of like, oh yeah, like just you're eager to see how much people have changed and you know what's going on. Uh, for when Tony's pregnant, which she's like, oh, I don't want to know. I don't want to tell anyone who's a dad. I wouldn't. That must be something pretty prominent storyline wise. Like, I mean, sure, she has her own reasons and stuff, but I'm like, it must be a big reveal when we find out who the dad actually. I'm curious what that's going to be about. That's definitely going to be interesting. But um, finding out Riverdale isn't quite the same. You know, Archie ends up learning like, you know. Uh, what happened with Cheryl, you know, um, it seems like she's kind of cut herself off from the outside world. Like she's done everything she can to kind of repair, you know, Riverdale and, you know, save it like the makeup for like the crimes that the Blossom family committed. But obviously she's kind of kept Tony at arm's length. Um, just because I guess whatever she's up to, she doesn't want to drag Tony into it. And it's like, you know, cause for her, she even says it later on when she's painting Tony, like my family's cursed and she brings up like the uh, Winchester situation. And it's like, uh, what was it? Um, what was her name? Sarah said like, what she was saying, like Sarah kept building on the house. Like she kind of felt like as long as she kept building on the house, she was able to keep the curse at bay. And it's like, is that what you're doing? And because Cheryl does care about Tony, she's like, I'm so happy for you. 
Because um, you can tell, it, you know, she kind of had to bite her tongue a little bit when she's like, yeah, I, I'm not going to be so gauche as to ask, you know, who the dad is, you know, to, of her baby. But it's like, I think for Cheryl, there's probably a part of her that's like, I want us to be, you know, that to be us having the family. Because even Cheryl was like, she's, I mean, Tony was like, I came out to my family. They're mostly, most of her family. Well, I think she said in general, she came out to most of her family and they're accepting of it. Even like I've had, we've had talks about you. So it's like, if we wanted to pick up our relationship, we could. But whatever it is that Cheryl's mixed up in, she's keeping everyone at arm's length. I think it's going to be interesting if Archie somehow is able to help her. Because remember, Archie kind of saved her like in the first season, like when she fell between the ice. Like he like busted up his hands uh, or at least one of his hands. I, I think it might have been both uh, breaking her out of the ice. So and once again, looking at that dream when he was looking up at her and she's kind of got this look to her and just kind of nodding her head like there, there's that. Like I said, it's foreshadowing some stuff in that vein. It seems like they might be setting it up so that she's up to some forgery stuff. I don't I don't know how she got mixed up in that, but it seemed like it. And it seems like it might be her Nana Rose that's kind of pushing for it. Because at one point, it's like, oh, this is a perfect copy. So let's see if you can copy a masterpiece's master's work. You see a tear rolling down her face. Because in pursuit of whatever it is they're mixed up in, she has to put... She want, probably wants nothing more than to be with Tony right now. Like, she's been holding off. Like, that's what this grand venture was about was to clear the make you know uh redeem the blossom name so that she can make it up to not just the town but even tony's family so that they could eventually be together but now she has to keep her at arm's length because she doesn't want tony mixed up in whatever it is now it's kind of interesting because i'm like is this just a nana rose thing because it's like you would have never thought nana rose would kind of go full dark side because she's always been that person by Cheryl's side, but maybe it's like something they got in bed together in that situation of like, and now it's kind of like, well, we have to do something illegal. So it's like, all right, you know, maybe there's money issues. Maybe the for, uh, Blossom fortune and stuff isn't what it is. Cause um, we have a uh, Hiram trying to like buy it all for her. Also Reggie being his right hand man, which in, in retrospect kind of makes a lot of sense. I mean, let's not forget he was, you know, um, he was, um, uh, Veronica's for a little while but also like obviously there's a lot of similarities between Archie and Reggie too so for Reggie to end up there is kind of sad you know especially because you, you would think Reggie would see like all the shit Archie had to go through because of um Hiram but to be fair maybe it was just kind of a situation where it's like maybe Reggie's going a lot more renegade in his seven years maybe just things didn't work out and it's just I mean because because it, it almost seems like to a certain extent it feels like this is kind of what they're setting up that everyone's kind of falling in a little bit in emotions of like their parents to a certain extent and I, sadly we know that like you know his dad was abusive so I'm curious like it, does that have something to do with it? Because, like, obviously, you know, it's just, it's not just all that that's going down. We actually, you know, catch up with, like, the main crew. We end up finding out, you know, first, um, Betty, you know, she's at Quantico. She's been hunting serial killers, which I think is so interesting, like, what the, what the direction they've had in her, sto had her, her stories going in that direction. Because, obviously, this week, uh, there's going to be the new show, Clarice, following Clarice from, you know, uh, Silence of the Lambs, you know, which I think is interesting. So, because you kind of get a little bit of a same feel and vibe to that, which I think is interesting, uh, which, it, you know, interesting because it literally premieres tomorrow at the time of me recording this, but tonight um, when this actually goes up on YouTube, you know, so I just think that's kind of fascinating. But basically it turns out like it's like, oh, she went through something traumatic and it's like, oh, it, it seems that traumatic situation was she was captured by a serial killer, and it seems like for two weeks, which is, I mean, and that in itself is kind of an interesting thing. It's like, you would think because of the whole Charles situation, you'd be a little reluctant to go down the FBI route, but I guess it's like, well, Charles' situation is his own means, because obviously she's been working with everybody, you know, Jughead and everything to like capture killers and stuff like it's kind of become her thing. Which I guess it's you. The argument is it's become her obsession. It has been for a while because I guess it gives her an outlet for the darkness in her. It gives her, and you know, using the darkness, her understanding of killers, like you know, the, what kind of runs through her veins to a certain extent to kind of be able to use that to understand killers to track them. So it's like I, you know, Charles used his like the killer in him to do bad, even though he wanted to make it seem like oh he did good with his. It's like no, I'm going to actually do good with that side of myself. And obviously, it's the whole thing of her not really... We don't know the ins and outs of everything, but those seven years, it seems like Betty's not the biggest in opening herself up. Um, I'm curious, are we going to find out, like, Jughead was the last time she really kind of opened up to someone? I'm curious. Um, 
because obviously that ended up playing out the way it did. We don't know if they've had any interactions over the seven years or not. Um, obviously, once again, they haven't met up as a group, but who knows like whether there's been individual conversations like, hey, maybe Archie's talked to Veronica, or maybe they haven't talked at all these seven years. Maybe he's talked to Jughead. Maybe, I don't know. Just the way Jughead was looking at the phone makes me almost feel like he probably hasn't heard from Archie in a very, very long time. I don't know. But, I, I mean, they have each other's numbers, so either they still have the same numbers and he was just taking... Well, he might have gotten the numbers from Tony because Tony might have kept up a little bit with everybody. So, I, once again, don't know a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, it turns out the situation of her getting captured by a serial killer is because she got a little... She was so desperate to save, like, this particular victim, but she was already dead. She was like, it didn't matter if I had backup or not uh, because... Um, she was already dead by the time we got there. I was like, yeah, but if you had waited for backup, maybe you would have been able to catch, uh, was it TBK, trash uh, bag killer? Because uh, it seems like his whole thing is, it seems like he covers himself in trash bags, but also it seems like he kind of does the Dexter thing. It's not the same thing, but it kind of reminds you of the Dexter thing where he like sliced body parts up. It seems like it's kind of a, a, a similar kind of um, MO in that regard. Uh, but, um, she, it's like, oh yeah, but TBK also got away because of her, and she's like, yeah, I get it, like, it's like, that's her own guilt, and because of, like, she messed up like that, not only did she go through the traumatic thing that she went through, which, even seeing those scenes were, like, terrifying, like I said, it, even those moments like that, like, it seemed, it almost seemed, like, I know it's weird to kind of make, I mean, well, it, this is based on a comic book, you know, with the characters based on the comic book, but it's like, it reminded me almost some scarecrow type of shit from like Batman, like that. I mean, because if if you want to compare it to any superhero property, it definitely leans itself to kind of more like a Batman type of situation because a lot of its villains can be spooky, like in particular Scarecrow. So TBK, like just aesthetically, just kind of, I he almost I guess to a certain extent, kind of reminds me of like Pig and Scarecrow mixed together to a certain extent. I mean, to be fair, but like Batman's got a lot of like not even just super powered serial killer hit. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I was trying to say was like Batman also doesn't just have super powered serial killer villains. He also has like straight up just regular villains like Calendar uh, Man, for example, regardless of going on an tangent and all that. But nevertheless, obviously, that whole situation has, um, you know, left a mark on Betty. But Betty's kind of got that aspect of herself where she tries to be strong. I think not only for other people around her, but more so for herself because she doesn't want to, because obviously it's like, well, the longer she seems like she's still dealing with stuff, the less she can go back to actual work because they have her doing a lot of cold cases and it's a lot of paperwork. So she's kind of got a desk job now. And even like her current boyfriend, Glenn, there seems to be like a little bit of absence of intimacy where it's just kind of like, ah, it seems like she's kind of pulling away from that uh, to a so we don't know once again we're only getting a peek at after you know the time skip and everything which interesting enough uh glenn is played by grayston holt which cw wise obviously he was in you know season six of the 100 for like uh, what two or three episodes maybe and then also i think i think yeah after that was batwoman that might have been around the same time i think it was I think he pops up in Batwoman afterwards. Whatever the case may be, like it's just it's just interesting. It's like, oh, now you're on this too as well. Um, so Betty's still working other cases, but obviously the TBK is the one that's the most important. It's kind of like the one that got away, um, kind of haunting her. Even at, she claims not to have nightmares, but obviously she is having nightmares about it. I mean, it seems like she was literally held captive by a serial killer. Of, Two weeks. I doubt anyone else knows that, and that is probably going to start rearing its head in you know moments for Betty, which is going to be interesting too. Because let's not forget, like you know, how that might trigger and affect Betty's kind of darker side. You know, like what kind of you know, like what that what it could potentially imply for her. I'm really you know curious to see where um, that potentially would go. Then you have Veronica. You know, oh, she's married. It's a one year anniversary with Chadwick. Uh, but he's kind of pressuring her and pushing her to like, hey, we should have a you have a baby. Maybe you should kind of pull back on work, not do anything too stressful, which Veronica's not too big on. I think in particular, any significant other telling her what to do, because it's like, I've gotten to this point on my own. I don't need anyone to try and tell. Because I think it's like she already had her dad kind of bossing her around, dictating and manipulating her to a certain extent. So I think that probably just rubs her a little bit the wrong way. Um 
But also, like, she's supposed to be working somewhere called Lacey's, but in actuality, she was working at a jewelry store. And I guess for her, because she, she talks about it, it seems like she was kind of a part of that Wall Street situation where she was, you know, st I guess stocks and stuff like that. And she was like, oh, like, apparently that's where her and Chad had actually met each other because it was like, oh, we're, we're killing uh, the game here. We were such a dynamic pair. But it's like he kind of told her to kind of back away from that after the incident, which we'll get to in a second. But she couldn't just have some mild manner job. She wanted a job that just be fast paced and just kind of puts her a little on the like, you know, and it seems like this jewelry job and I guess the connections and just kind of being able to sway so much. It, I've never seen the movie. I've heard good things about it. I've just never checked the movie out. It kind of almost feels a little uncut Jimish. Uh, like I said, this is also coming from someone who's never seen the movie. It's at least what they were setting up with Veronica. Chad wasn't too happy to f find out, like, wait, you've been lying to me this entire time. But it turns out the incident in particular was like, and I wouldn't call this timely. It's just, I don't want to go direct comparison, but it's just like, it, there is a situation, obviously it's an anniversary or something. Recently, I'm like, I just, I, I, it's depressing to talk about it. it I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. It kind of reminds, it just kind of puts it back in my head of like, right, the, the whole, everyone on a plane, you know, Kobe, his daughter, and all those other people. Like, it, it just kind of put that in my mind. And obviously for Chad, it's like, hey, like, I, you know, when, before, I, he figured this was going to be the end. So he was like, I wanted you to, um, I was praying that my wife would be the one that ended up surviving. Luckily, they both survived. But then it's like it put life in perspective for him, like that life's too short. And, you know, he all the things he wanted with her, like he just kind of wants to expedite it. Because even, you know, Veronica's talking to her mom about everything. It's like she doesn't want to be a mom right now. She wants to, you know, live her life. You know, it's like, oh, I can always put it off. But she's like. Based on an accident, it shows that, no, you don't you never guaranteed how much time you have. Um, so it's like, maybe you should kind of start thinking about it, which obviously her mom is basically like a reality star now. Cause she's like on like, you know, uh, it's like, Oh, I guess like real housewives of New York type of shit. So that was interesting. Cause even Veronica being like, yeah, I'm not, nah, I don't, I'm not going to be in any episodes. The last thing I want to do is put my business and my entire life out there on the fr um, front lines to it all. But, uh, when it was all said and done, it's like, Oh, you know. Chad and her made up, but then like he offers her like this kind of almost like Fabergé egg type of situation, and she ends up giving it to someone else and be like using the words he's saying like oh you can be a part of a collection. I think for her it was just a thing of like oh it just I think it it probably reminded her too much of her dad. Like anytime he screwed up, it just, I think for her it just it seemed like too much of a cycle of like oh like here's it's like oh I'm trying to buy you off and you know Veronica doesn't like that. Like I said, it probably reminds her too much of her dad and it's like oh you're rich and powerful and you just feel like rather than just being sincere, it's like it's almost like you have to buy people off to make them love me. And, not saying that's necessarily how she feels, but I feel like that's the perspective you could end up getting from that. So those that's her situation. Um They referenced it a little bit, like about like, oh yeah, you're supposed to be working here with Katie. And he like he, Chad was like, Oh hey Katie. So obviously like we are blending those. I mean, to be fair, Katie um King took place in New York, so it makes sense. So like it's that thing of like, you know, uh sadly we won't get those stories, but the fact is, like I brought that up before, like even though the show got canceled, uh, whether they'll bring that in that's they probably won't, but that that any future stories for that where that could have gone and where things ended up probably won't get exact answers, but it, it's probably just always going to be like a background thing, like a little wink and nod to like, oh, where things have gone because obviously it's the same universe, so the time skip has affected them as well. So um, but uh, after that, we have Jughead, uh, things between him and his girlfriend aren't good, he's got writer's block, he owes a lot of money, and this is also what I'm talking about, where it's like, you know, people are kind of, like, repeating, like, caught him in the cycle, like, is it Betty, kind of elements of her brother, little elements of her dad, little elements of her mom, Veronica, there's bits of her mom, but you also see bits of her dad, you definitely see it in Jughead, because he's drinking now and stuff, but obviously that was an issue with his dad, and so it's just like, where Jughead is right now, it's like, I think it's just like all this promise of like who he could have been and like, oh, he's a great writer and what that would have been and things kind of haven't necessarily worked out. It's a situation of kind of like, oh, he's not saying that this is what he's doing, but other people kind of have the perspective. It's almost like, oh, you're coasting on your old glory. It's like, yo, you don't want to be a one hit wonder. It's kind of what his publicist was saying. So, and people are threatening to pull out money. So, 
uh, any advances he got. So things aren't really good, looking good necessarily on the Jughead front. Uh, his play's got an eviction notice. His girlfriend's breaking up with him because it's like your stories are so more important to you. Because I guess outside of everything, because Jughead lost touch with everyone, like his his core that kind of kept him, I think, on the right path. Like all of that was going. Betty was going. Veronica was going. Archie was going. Like a lot of those connections and stuff were going. And I think that probably plays a part in his writer's block. Maybe potentially because I think probably the outcast, the book he wrote, um, they, they even referenced like, oh yeah, it's based kind of like supposed to be like the outsider. Uh, I think they were refer I think they said, oh, they might've said outsiders, but I think, it, I don't know if he was kind of referencing the Stephen King book, which obviously got adapted on, you know, at, at HBO, but regardless, I just thought that was so um, interesting. Like, obviously it's just like, once again, like, no one's life is 100% what they want it to be. It just, it feels like everyone, I mean, it was almost like a situation where everyone kind of ended up where they were just because they fell apart. You know, it's not like everything like worked out wonderfully and oh, everything's going according to plan. To be fair, that's life in general. So it's interesting to see like, obviously it's not like, oh, it's like a happily ever after everything worked out perfectly. It's like, no, like things are tough, especially because under the circumstances that pushed them all in these different directions, it's because they um, as a core group fell apart. And it's not just the effect it's had on them, it's the effect that it's had on Riverdale, because I think them being a core crux of what kind of, truth be told, is kind of held Riverdale together, which is kind of putting a lot on them, but I think them as the next generation, like, uh, you know, I mean, the current generation of Riverdale makes you think, like, well, maybe things weren't so copacetic and, like, you know, when you left everything to them, because obviously things kind of in Riverdale kind of blew up. But um, obviously he meets that girl, of course, she's like, oh, my God, I'm a big fan of your book and everything. And it's like, oh, basically the story, obviously it's a version of him and Betty getting together. And then she's like, oh, I thought that was so he's like romantic. She's like sexy. They do their thing. I was like, OK. And then the moment she comes out wearing that shirt and she's like, oh, is this okay? He's like, no, no, no problem. It's like, it probably brought a lot of memories back of like, oh yeah, Betty used to wear that. It's like, oh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's that situation of like, Betty was the first person that like he fell madly in love with considering, like I said, how things just kind of ended on kind of like a, a downward spiral when it came to that. Um, I think so much was left unresolved. Like once again, we don't know what happened in that seven years or whether anything worked, went towards because, like, later on when they're together, Jughead looks downright miserable. He's just kind of, like, shrunk down and just me like, ugh. Uh, because, let's not forget, Jughead was the one who actually, he was the only one that showed up that, you know, we, we don't know, maybe it's a thing of, maybe he showed up the next year, no one came. So maybe, like, this reunion hits him a little sourly because he's like, I made it most of the time, you guys never did. Maybe it's an on and off thing, like, maybe Jughead showed up this year, but then, like, the next year he didn't, but Veronica and Betty did. Or maybe he's, like I said, maybe he's the only one who showed up every single year, or maybe he only came the first year, and the moment he found out no one else was coming, he stopped coming, maybe after the second or third year. We'll have to wait to kind of find out about that, but, um... I also love Cora. Uh, it's like also like she's kind of blackmailing him because it's like, so I kind of got with you. I kind of ambushed you at that bar because I knew that's where you'd be. So you would read my book. It's only like 300 pages. If you like it, maybe you could pass it on your publicist. And it's like, okay, so these people you owe money to, yeah, you either read my book or I know how to get in contact with certain people. So he's about to start reading it before Archie calls. I'm sure that's going to turn into a whole mess of thing. Because obviously the biggest focus is going to be the kids. I wonder how much they're going to focus. Because obviously it was a little bit of back and forth. It's always been the kids of Riverdale, like, you know, Archie and his friends and everything. It'd be them being the focus but I'm curious like are the parents going to be touched on it all they referenced them and stuff but I wonder how much of a part they're going to play in the story because the only parents we saw in this episode was Hiram and um and uh Hermione so we don't know well we know like for example we know Kevin's dad is the only one left on the police force because that, that was my big question like he got reinstated but I was wondering like and what like last episode but I was wondering like how that was going to work like especially with Archie's dad's business because I, I didn't because wasn't he I, I last time I remember wasn't he kind of running that like I'm surprised that also didn't get brought up in the conversation because I'm trying to remember where the last time we left off with that I'm pretty sure it was Kevin's dad was kind of running things like Archie kind of left things in his hand if I remember correctly just because of everything that was going on between with him and his uncle at the time but I think that's the last but we hear hiding her hair about that I, I would think you would want to, I, I don't know 
maybe maybe there was something else I'm just not remembering about that. If you do remember, or you know, I, mean, I will probably look into it myself. But uh, if if that was the last, whether or not that was the last time, like you know, uh, Andrew's uh, construction got brought up in the story was like the whole thing of you know uh, Kevin's dad taking over. But um, nevertheless, Tony gave Archie a um, look around. Uh, Riverdale and just how much things had changed. Like anyone that was had enough money to get out of Riverdale got out. Anyone that stayed are people who were too poor or too prideful to move. Um, obviously, so much of Riverdale, so much that day. It's like oh, the um, fire station kind of shut down. Obviously, his gym. He goes there. It's like it's kind of like a hot mess in there. Um, there was some place else you were referencing that's kind of shut down. All right, like. It turns out because this is all because Hiram has been doing things. Obviously, once again, we know he's trying to buy some of, like, um, Cheryl's land. But it turns out, like, Sodale, like, it's a place, like, 30 miles away. Or, have, like, it's a, it's like a certain mileage away. And basically, um, he he would... I forgot what... To, it was something specifically he was tearing down. Because it was just meant to be a fast track. It was a faster route, like, roadway for the rich to take because obviously the only people left in the town are like the rich rich and then like the poor poor so it's I'm, I'm referenced Gotham before it is kind of on some Gotham level shit with just like I think the disparity of like what's going on and like obviously it's not even a Riverdale Archie remembers because for him it's like yeah it just doesn't even feel like the same doesn't even feel like Riverdale anymore so you know he had called everyone up because he's thinking like you know we need to handle this together like Tony was going to walk away but he's like nah you're just as much a part of this guys we got to do something because obviously it makes sense out anyone Archie would say that because for Archie it's like this town is so important to him because it was important to his dad so it's like my dad fought and bled for this town so I gotta you know keep it going for his sake but obviously it's like is everyone else going to necessarily feel that because like some of the looks around the table makes you go mm, doesn't seem like everyone else is necessarily as thrilled about that you know um uh, just everyone's got their own demons that they're um chasing or rather being chased by um they are you know everyone's got their own demons they've got to you know be dealing with um you know i think archie would probably be able to well i mean archie and jughead and you know i think could be there because i think they could all end up helping each other throughout because each one of them probably has their own ptsd after everything i mean jughead Almost died, you know, years ago, but he knows that. You know, Betty was held by a serial killer. Archie's been in a life and death situation multiple times. Black Hood situation, being attacked by that bear, um, kind of coming back from that. Um, anything he experienced while in the army, you know, and Veronica having that, you know, near death experience, like it all, you know, sh shook her. And I'm sure, like, each one of them, that's probably the only, like, means of helping get past some of that like it ain't gonna be like a like oh man i'm good i'm great they're probably gonna put up a lot of defenses by pretending like they're good when in actuality they're not they're suffering but they're probably trying to keep everything copacetic because it's like well we're not as tight as we used to obviously there's still a lot of unresolved issues like things seem like they're okay but you know a lot can build up over those seven years of where we kind of rather than dealing with things back then you know we were kind of saying our goodbye so we didn't want to be on a sour note but it's like a lot can build up in that seven year time frame um because the moment they were i was worried about pop uh when it was like you know what well what, what about pop and it's like oh he's retiring because when he showed up i was like oh you're not dead i thought this was gonna be about pop but it's like no uh what was her name uh, they were saying it at the end of the episode but the girl like it's like she showed up to riverdale two years ago to start over but now she's 21 she's gonna go to san francisco to try and start over again but she'll never make it so uh, cause, um, Tony, uh, you know, well, cause we, you know, Tony works at the school and so does Kevin, uh, cause Tony's a new guidance counselor, but also she handles a lot of like deliveries and stuff like that. There was even a comment she had to Archie about like, yeah, no one go drives the buses. The buses don't stop here anymore because Riverdale's kind of dangerous after dark, you know? So it's like, okay. Uh, I guess we got to see that with the truck and everything, which, uh, not interesting, but it's like, oh, I'm currently watching the show Big Sky, which kind of deals with her trucker being up to some nasty terrible shit so um but it seems like this is going to be the thing of like the moment they come back to Riverdale another murder is probably going to happen and maybe this isn't going to be the first it's one of many that's just kind of fallen to the waste I mean to be fair like Riverdale doesn't have much of a police force all it has is um Sheriff Keller 
Um, and Hiram seems to have all the power yet again. I mean, it's, it's always been building towards this, but I think he doesn't really have anyone to kind of stop him. It makes you wonder what about the uh, Edermosa thing. Like, did he gain back his strength and take it back from her? Or is she holding things down in, like, Miami or something while he's maintaining things in Riverdale? Hopefully we'll get some answers to all of that. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, has Veronica kept up with all the stuff that her dad's been up to? Or has she just kind of kept her distance from him? Don't know. A lot of questions. Uh, uh, hopefully, we get some answers to some of you know some of this. These are questions from over this time skip. You know, and, you know where uh, things kind of go from here. Where these characters go from here, and you know, like I said, keeping up, catching up with other characters like some of the other parents, like Alice, Jughead, I mean, um, FP, uh, Jellybean, like how that whole situation played out. You know, Alice. Um, because I would say, like, Archie found out, like, Ghoulies moved into his um his house, which obviously I'm sure that probably rubs him the wrong way. So, um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So, the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye. <laughs>